everyone this is Tim here at Makers Machining I've been on a little hiatus we went to five tech here last week and I'm about ready to start putting some uh, videos together for the milling machine I was working on a project here today and this is just too good to pass by here as far as uh, showing you some different things and the versatility of a milling machine and some of the jobs that we do so I'm going to swing this thing around here and let you take a look at the setup I've got in my milling machine here um, this uh, is a Bridgeport style head on this milling machine. It's not a Bridgeport mill, but uh, I've got to machine an angle on some bronze wear plates. Uh, we started out this morning with uh, a piece of bronze plate. This isn't the one because I used up all my material, but this is a centrifugally cast bronze plate. It's a 954 aluminum bronze. It's good for wear, wear purposes. Uh, started out sawing it to length. We machined all the dimensions, put a step in there, uh, drilled and countersunk some holes uh, Here's the bottom side of it, and then our last operation is to put an angle on the wear plate I I had it set up in here. and We'll show you here in a minute uh, What it looks like I got it uh, machined on an angle right down to the to the point there uh, I had to set the head of my mill on a 17 degree angle to get the correct cut there so you can see here how that mill head has tilted I've tilted that over it's got a protractor up here on the side that tells us that we're at 17 and a half degrees. Uh, and you know, there's four bolts in the front of the machine right here. This one, this one, and these two over here are for uh, loosening up the head so you can tilt the head on an angle. There's uh, our gear and pinion in there too that helps you rotate the head. Uh, we've been busy making bronze parts here. And uh, I just I thought, man, I gotta, I gotta show you how this has worked out here. You, can, you might look at that and say, yeah, the vise is not on there the normal way. Uh, when I first machined the parts, I had the vise sitting in there front to back. And uh, now I'm doing the angle. I've got 15 inches of travel on my uh, Y-axis on my table. My parts are 10 and a half inches, so I'm able to, to machine that to angle on there with my end mill uh, by gradually going in and making deeper cuts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the difference between climb cutting and conventional cutting here, too. Um, but just to show you that we've been pretty busy here this week, this is uh, several days of work, we've got a whole pallet full of wear plates that we've made. Uh, these go into different dies and machine parts, and you can see there's uh, oil grooves machine in some of them. They're all, they all started out with that centrifugally cast uh, finish on the surface of the bronze, and uh, after machining it, we've got fixtures that we clamp them down to. You see all the screw holes there flathead screws that we use them to clamp down to the fixtures and uh, get our uh, our flatness done because the plates that we bolt them down to for our final cuts are super flat so uh, that's that's a nice looking pile of work there and the result of that pile of work is this uh, tub full of bronze shavings which will make its way to the recycler here this week uh, it's a lot of machining to, to get all that scrap but uh, these bars started out, they're usually about a hundred thousandths oversize in all the dimensions, so you've got enough stock to uh, finish up at the sizes you want. But let's go back over here by our milling machine. Uh, I, like I said, I had all the uh, different sizes and, and shapes that I've cut in there. Thickness, width dimension, uh, the, little, the little step on the back side has to fit over another plate. I'll see if I can grab that here and show you what it bolts onto. Here we are. This is a little disjointed video today because I'm I'm doing this all by myself here, so bear with me. But here's the plate that these things mount to. I'm gonna get this guy out of here. All the flathead screws that are there. Uh, this thing here will mount right on where the flathead screws are. Uh, the important thing about flathead screws, they uh, once once they seat into a part, uh, that angled head on the bolt the uh, flathead screw really locks it in place. When you've got five screws in line there, uh, boy, it's, it really locks tight and it, it locates good. It's almost like a dowel pin positioning something on a, on a plate. Um, anyhow, uh, that's, that's what we had to do to get prepared. This is our last operation. I'm gonna get these things all put away here so they stay safe and sound. And we can get our, uh, get our cuts going here. I wanna just show you how the cut goes on this one here. Um, okay, here we go. Um, this is a four fluid end mill. It looks a little bit long for the job, and probably is, but by the time we get down to 
our last cut R right now we're just going to cut along the top edge we'll move in you know 50 thousandths then 25 thousandths and gradually go in until this is a 3 8 thick plate about uh, 0.375 and we're going to go all the way across this way 3 8 of an inch and if you do the the trigonometry 375 at 17 and a half degrees should put you around uh, this thing comes down it's supposed to come down to about an inch and 200 thousandths or thereabouts so if you do the math 3 8 this way 17 and a half degrees this way will give you somewhere around an inch and a inch and seven thirty seconds maybe okay i'm going to turn this on i'm only going to make a few passes showing what we got you've already seen the finished uh the finished part i'll get it up here for you again um got that up there and and you can see the nice finish and the nice angle it comes right to a sharp edge on the very top of the the part uh so we're we're right on. Look at that nice, nice finish there. You see uh, the countersunk holes there in my dirty hand. Uh, you can see some marker on there and a scribed line. Lay out your pieces before you do any machining. Uh, if you get those screw holes in the wrong place that they don't match up here with the the plate they mount to, then you, nothing fits because these these holes are exactly in the right spot. Uh, I, I took my print and I. I marked down there, I, I, I referenced from this end here, and I went one inch, then every hole is two and one eighth inches apart. That's not a real round number, so you gotta do the math, lay it, uh, put the actual dimensions off your zero end over here for each hole from zero, and then you'll have the, uh, the correct locations for them when you go to machine them. But still, lay it out, because you need to make sure that you're in the right spot there where the holes go in. If your holes on the plate don't match up with these holes, your fit won't be very good. So let's uh, let's give this a shot here. I'm going to turn this thing on. Hopefully you can hear me. I'll try to talk a little louder. You got to make sure you get the end mill going the right rotation there. You can see the flutes there. If you go that way, you won't be cutting anything. So you got to go the correct rotation in order for this to cut. Now we're going to start out here with... Uh, I'm going to come in and touch this thing off here. You know, it's just a small corner right now. You'll be able to hear it start to cut. There we go. And the bottom of my end mill is going to clear the jaw on the vise. I've already, I've already done one of these, so I know where everything is at. And you see, I, I took a little cut there. I'm going to move in another 25 thousandths here. I've, I've got my readout on my mill here. I'm going to set my Y axis at zero. So now I know how far I'm moving. So I'm going to move 25 thousandths. Oops, X axis, sorry about that. Let's set this at zero anyhow. X axis, zero, ab set, okay. I moved it in a little ways. We'll go, we just got to kind of keep track of our, our moves that we make here. Now right now we're climb cutting. The, the rotation of that cutter would, in the, in the case we're taking a heavier cut, we're trying to climb on top of the part. You, you can see the direction we're going here. As, as we move into the cut like this, we're climb cutting. We're taking off that corner. So there's hardly any resistance to the cut at all. So we're going to walk this along here. Uh, it's cutting free and easy right now. Uh, my setup is here. I've got this uh, the shoulder on the back. I've only got a small area where I can truly clamp the bronze. Uh, to the backup bar. I put a backup bar in there, a piece of hot rolled steel. I didn't have anything cold rolled that was quite big enough. I would have preferred that, but it, it came out with a nice nice finish on the last one, so this one will also. But my end mill is locked on the quill. My handle right here to the quill has locked the quill, uh, quill in, so the end mill won't go up and down. Uh, this is held in place in a uh, end mill holder, so there's no collet. The end mill is held in there with a set screw. Uh, so we don't have to worry about the uh, cutter pulling out of the the collet like you do in a like an R8 collet. Okay, I set X at zero. I'm going to take a 50 thousandths cut here on this first one. Oh, that's a little too far. Let's go 50. 50 thousandths. Okay, now this is a conventional direction of a cut. We're still not taking much off of there because we've got uh, we're cutting basically a corner off. But let's take a look at what the cut looks like here. You can see 50. Uh, 50 thousandths moved in. You can see the radius there. Uh, we're 
buzzing that off there. So we're going to be going back and forth through this here. The RPM of the, the cutter there, it's not screaming fast. Uh, it could go a little bit faster because we're taking such a light cut right now, but by the time we get down to the, the finished cut where there's an angle and it goes down an inch and a quarter, we're about a third of the way there. Look at your uh, 3 8 bar, we've taken off already a good 75,000, so maybe we're a quarter of the way there, something like that. Uh, I always kind of look at numbers to see what they've taken off and how far I've got to go. And, and we're just going to eyeball it to that sharp corner, but uh, now we've taken 50 off. Now we're going to climb cut, that's a little bit more, so I'm only going to take off 40, so let's go up to 90. Okay, we'll go back here now. Still making a real nice cut. It's not uh, laboring the machine or anything. Or the cutter's uh, not falling, having any trouble. It's kicking off the chips real nice. Uh, should be should be cutting good here. Now, uh, let's see if we can see about how deep the step is. We're up to 40,000 step. We've moved the table left and right. Uh, we're not moving the, the table up and down. We're not moving the quill down. We're just moving the table left and right. Anyhow, uh, I just wanted to mention something about this bronze, too. This is great stuff because uh, if you've got a machine that has parts moving back and forth, sometimes you'll have cast iron riding on bronze or steel riding on bronze or bronze riding on steel. This is not brass. Just because it's yellow doesn't mean it's brass. It might look like brass, but believe me, it's not. We're going to take another 50,000 stuff, so we're going to go to 140. Now, if you remember, we started out as a 375 thick piece. We're at 140, but we had already taken a cut off of there. So, now we're getting a little singing here. But, uh, again, I wanted to mention that uh, we're taking a little bit deeper cut, uh, so we're getting a little bit more vibration now. I wanted to mention again about the brass. There's uh, several different kinds of yellow material that you use. Uh, there's a 660 brass. That's used for bushings and machines. There's brass that has oil impregnated in, so those are oil impregnated bearings. They keep lubrication going off of your moving parts. Um, then there's this 954 bronze. It's got different chemistry in it, and for the metallurgist in you, you might want to investigate what that is. It's got a little bit of tin in it, and lead, and I think even some iron, because one way to tell if you've got a 954 aluminum bronze is if you take, if you take a magnet, there's a little residual magnetism in in 954 bronze where you can pick it up. I'll show you here. I, I got a, I happen to have a magnet here. It's a nice strong magnet. So I'm gonna touch that on there. And you can see it picks up that bronze. 932 bronze, the chips will not uh, stick or be able to be picked up. Okay, we're at 140, we're gonna go to 175. We're gonna start taking lighter cuts so it doesn't make so much noise and has a better chance than we're we're getting an increasingly larger surface that we are cutting out. But uh, if you look back at this now, we've got the, the head of this milling machine is tilted on an angle. Uh, I had to put the vise per, uh, perpendicular to the way it normally would sit, and I had an indicator that I ran across the front of the material and the jaw on the vise, so I knew it was exactly square with the travel of the table, because we don't want our angle cut to go on there crooked and it'll, it'll be sharp and a nice corner on one end and not even close to the, the right blend on the other end. So, anyhow, uh, we'll finish this cut here. I'm going to sign off here. I don't want to get these too long-winded here, but uh, here you see the versatility of the milling machine. Uh, the next episode I really want to do now is start to talk about the ins and outs of the milling machine. This is, a, this is too good of an opportunity to pass by looking at the, some of the the bronze material that we had made into gibbs and wear plates and now uh, cutting this here this is a wear plate also it's called by whoever's getting it so anyhow i uh, hope you enjoyed the the trip here today we'll talk to you again soon so long <laughs>